Auto Line on the Road at Cars MBS has been brought to you by Borg Warner. With special thanks to the Center for Automotive Research. Tom Stevenson is the CEO and the chairman of a company called Pajarito Powder. I got that right? You did get that right. Very good. Interesting name. Pajarito, little birdie, right? In little, Spanish? little birdie in Spanish. That's right. So the origin of that's kind of interesting, actually, because the, the inspiration for our company is technology that we licensed from Los Alamos National Laboratory. Los Alamos National Laboratory, of course, is the birthplace of the atomic bomb, one of our key research centers here in the United States. And what most pe people don't know is that it's located on Pajarito Mountain. So there are actually no little birds involved. No little birds were harmed in the making of our powder but uh, it is the origin for our company because that's where we originally got the technology that we licensed as part of starting the company. Very, very interesting. So what's this powder that you make? Right, so what we make is we make the catalyst that goes into fuel cells for fuel cell electric vehicles, fuel cell electric trucks, and for other applications. We also make catalysts for the reverse side of the equation, which is the production of hydrogen as well through the process of electrolysis. But for the purposes of fuel cell electric vehicles, the reason why this is interesting is that when you start to talk about scaling up the volume of production of fuel cell electric vehicles, the cost of the catalyst overwhelmingly becomes the single largest component, up to and over 40% of the total cost of the fuel cell stack. So lots of opportunity to take out cost with the catalyst. Absolutely, but it's tricky because the reason why <coughs> that portion is so high is because there are precious metals associated with it. Platinum in the case of the fuel cell electric vehicles. And what we can do is actually reduce the amount of platinum that's required by as much as 50% and therefore bring down the overall cost of the fuel cell stack by as much as 20%. And this creates a great opportunity for the OEM customers that we're working with. So you can scale with this powder? You can make a lot of it? Absolutely. That's actually what we're doing right now is we're in the process of building out our next generation manufacturing facility that's based on an investment that we received from Hyundai Motor Company last year and some follow-on investment that we hope to be able to announce soon that will allow us to do the build out of our facility in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is where we're based, to be able to do additional scale and be able to produce the level of material that's necessary for our customers going into the future. What's so special about your powder? Well, there's a couple of things about it. Uh, at, at its core, we utilize something called an interconnected mesoporous carbon, which is our favorite phrase, all right, because that's the support material that the platinum is deposited on. And effectively, what we're able to do is make each particle of platinum as effective as possible. And that's because the platinum is dispersed out in this carbon material, this support material, and it needs to avoid detaching, going out then through the tailpipe, moving together, agglomerating, staying where it is, and getting the maximum opportunity of effectiveness for the fuel cell and the activity as the oxygen comes in and as the water comes out. And so all of those pieces are at play together and it's a complicated dance that our support material ends up facilitating and adding not only to the level of activity, but to the overall durability and stability of the material going forward. And that provides a great opportunity for getting longer life with less precious metal material. You know, whenever I talk to, about fuel cells to, to people, they're highly skeptical. They're like, oh yeah, we've been hearing about fuel cells forever, never going to happen. What's your sense? Are we at uh, oh, no. an inflection point right now? Right, we are absolutely at an inflection point and it is happening. I mean, in addition to the passenger vehicles that have been deployed by Hyundai, or by, by Toyota, by Honda, the place where we're really seeing the strongest growth and opportunity right now is in the long distance heavy duty applications, in the trucks and in trains, ships, other applications as well. But the trucks are particularly interesting, right? Because this is where we see Daimler, Volvo, Hyundai, General Motors doing a lot of their work around these heavy duty applications. Because when you look at the, at the implications of trying to decarbonize, of trying to replace fossil fuels, the, the longer the distance and the heavier the load, the more that a battery becomes challenging and the more that you get the strength and advantages of utilizing hydrogen. In addition to that, when you start to talk about fleet owners who have a lot of these long distance over the, over the road vehicles, the ability to sort of canvas the entire country with only 400 
refueling stations, which is all that it would take to be able to cover the entire United States, ends up being important. And they do their calculations based on the total cost of ownership. Now, consumers want to know I can go any place, right? But truck drivers, they're on a route, they're on a plan. And so you can set specified points at which you can do refueling, and that ends up working out just fine. And so I think that the truck application is a fantastic entry point, because in order to solve the problem of decarbonization, we have to solve all of transportation, not just passenger cars, but we have to deal with trucks as well. And trains, where we're seeing already implementations in Europe as well, and for ships. Last question then. You got customers? I mean, are the, the automakers knocking on your door we here? Do. Or the truck manufacturers? We do. Most of the most of the automotive OEMs who have serious fuel cell programs are in the process of either evaluating, qualifying our material for implementation into their into their vehicles. Good stuff. Tom, thanks so much. Very interesting to Thank learn you. this. Appreciate it. Take care. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry.